Hello, pouring art people. Today I'm going to try to do the one for my sister that I have been planning. And I have decided that instead of doing it on a canvas, I'm doing it on a record and I'm going to make it into a clock. I'm a little bit nervous about this one because it's my understanding that you can't strip the paint off the record. You can re-pour over it though, so we shall see how this goes. Let me get you down. In less happy news, I'm sure many of you have heard that we had a school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. Super sad. I, I, I don't even know what to say about it. It's, we've got to do something. I don't have the answers to what that is, but something. But I will have a link in my video description. I'm trying to get this less cockeyed here. To the Rob Elementary Memorial Fund. If anybody wants to make donations, my next painting will be in the Rob Elementary School colors. So I've got the record coated. I used the Gluten Premium Semi Gloss for the base coat. And the colors I'm using are Amsterdam Titanium White. Prism Pour by Color Art Chantilly Lace. Prism Pour Morning Light, which I will show you in just a minute. And Chantilly Lace goes back and crazy. I did another painting just a little bit ago. I'm not sure why it's wanting to act up. I'm guessing just the heat out here. Welcome to Texas. So the background for I'm gonna do a little ring for with just the um, Amsterdam. You can't really see what I'm doing. It's just the Amsterdam white and chantilly lace. And then I'm going to drizzle some of the other colors over and then do a swipe. So the other colors I'm using are Prism Pour Morning Light, also by Color Art, Phalo Turquoise by, or Turquoise Phalo by Golden, and this is a mixture of Prussian Blue and Color, Color Art's Prism Pour Midnight Shadows, because the Phalo Blue by itself wasn't doing it quite what I wanted to do. So I'm going to start by doing a little pour of just the Amsterdam White and the Chantilly Lace. Just kind of doing a little ring-ish pour with it while it's acting crazy. I did a pour on a tile with these colors and then my daughter called. So I stopped and talked to her and I come back and the Chantilly lace is acting all crazy. So hopefully I can work with it because I, I really do want a little more of it on here than what I've already got. And I'm trying not to get a whole bunch of blue which is going to take a little bit of self-control. Guess it helps if I had it with Please work with me, Chantilly Lace. That's not too bad. Okay, so 
what I want to do is swipe over this with, I believe, this is the morning light also. Um, I mixed this up for that previous pour that I showed in my last video. I believe it's video number 11. I showed the results of that had too much blue on it. So I'm going by memory, but I believe this is the morning light. It could possibly be the Deco Art Sterling Silver. And I'm sorry I don't remember. But, oh, that's nice. I hope I can get that off there. Good job, Shannon. So I'm using that in titanium white as a cell activator. And we'll see how this goes. I'm hoping I'm talking up enough for you. I noticed that my audio drops now and then during my videos. Let me tell you a story about that. So I ordered a wireless lavalier setup. And I ordered it on the 13th from b &H Photo. And they shipped it and everything was going fine and then all of a sudden the delivery date arrived it's shipped FedEx and it wasn't out for delivery so I knew it was going to be late then the next day it said it was delayed with no ETA called FedEx and they said I needed to contact B&H because they couldn't look and find out anything more than what I already knew about it Ugh, that didn't go well. That really didn't go well. I didn't want to dig in on Um, so I got on the chat with B&H the next day because by this time they were closed and they shipped me out another one. And at this point, I'm slightly annoyed with FedEx, but you know, I'm perfectly happy with B&H. They're doing what they can do, right? So then, it finally got here uh, the next, the following Wednesday from what it was originally, so a week and a day late. And I charge it overnight and I go to fire it up the next day because you know I want to test it out and learn how to work with it and stuff before I do a video with it. And the receiver won't power on. So I get on the chat with B&H again and they ask me some questions and they determine it's DOA and they say I can return or exchange it and that's fine. But the return and exchange department wasn't open that late so I had to wait till the next day. And I get on the chat for that and the agent told me that it would be two weeks before I get the replacement. Because they have you ship it and they wait till they get it back before they ship out a new one. And I'm like, you know, I've waited already two weeks. That's, I'm really not okay with that. So I told them to refund that and she's like, well, we can't do that until you ship it back. And I'm like, you know, okay, fine. I, I, I don't want to keep it. It doesn't work. So what I did was I had them process it as a refund. And then I'm going to order it from Amazon. 
I should have checked to see if Amazon had it in the first place. People want to know why Amazon's so big. This is why Amazon's so big, because if I need to replace something from Amazon, they ship out the replacement as soon as they find out I want it replaced. And then if I don't ship it back, they just charge me for it again. And with a refund, as soon as it's shipped, they process the refund, not when it gets to them, when they get the tracking that says it's shipped. And it's just, I know everybody does things differently, but after you've already waited two weeks, didn't offer any kind of credit for the inconvenience or anything. So I probably will not be ordering from B&H again. And that is why I am still using my camera audio. So tonight or tomorrow, I will be ordering it from Amazon and it's actually going to be like $10, 20 cheaper anyway. I don't know why I didn't check Amazon for it, but I didn't. So here I am. Oh, that worked out well. Fingers slipped right into the middle of it. I'm questioning the, the wisdom of uh, using house paint for this. But I did it because my pouring medium, I guess I didn't mention that. I'm using the Shelly Art Blue Mix for this. So my pouring medium is Bayer 8300 and Josonia Gloss Varnish. And I will post the ratios in my description in case anybody wants them. And that's why I use the house paint as my base. But it's so sticky, sometimes it's hard to work with. But so yeah, that happened. Such is life. I was chomping at the bit to get audio that didn't drop when I turned my head. But it didn't happen that way. Yet, it's going to happen. I'm going to get better audio. Bear with me. You know, this is still a lot more blue than I planned. But on this, I kind of like it. I may just go with it. spots right there if I can get away with not losing it. Back this way. Shoot in the dark 
Trying to hold it so you can see and I can see too, because I couldn't tell how much the paint was in. Just want a little bit more of this one side. See if I can get it to come back the other way. And kind of okay with it even if it doesn't. Well obviously this has to dry and all that good stuff before I can make it into a clock. Okay, so there is some flocking with the white. But I think with this, I'm okay with that. Get you down for a close-up. Also, I'm going to be doing the Rob Elementary School piece. I'm going to do that on a record and make that into a pop as well. Just because I'm having fun with the record thing. And there's lots of sparkles because the midnight shadows and dark waters and the morning light and the chantilly lace all have mica. So only the turquoise phalo and the Amsterdam white are non-metallic colors. I don't even have to turn the flash on to get you guys sparkle, get you guys sparkle. See, that's the flocking I'm talking about. But I'm okay with it unless it gets any worse. If it gets any worse, then I will let you guys know that in my next video, and I will be pouring over this again. But if it stays like that, I'm okay. Because I really like the overall look, in spite of the fact it's a little more blue than I intended. And there is a backed up view of it for you. I really like the idea of repurposing old records and I like the idea of functional art in general. But what do you think? Drop me a comment. Tell me if you like the idea of a record clock, if you know other uses for records. What kind of functional art ideas have you seen or done that you think are really cool? Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, dislike, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you get notified when my videos come out on Fridays. Share with all your friends and I will catch you later.